screw and pull that gray hose off the elbow of the fan. Pull it right off the fan itself. You know, when it looks like a trombone with the two brass nuts, it should be hand tight in these machines. We didn't tighten them up yesterday and we were done. So pull the two brass nuts off and pull that trombone right out of there. <coughs> Once the trombone is out, there's a clip. No, nope. two fingers will snap the clip right out of place. Now these clips that come on the machine, they're all the same size. Whether it's for the flow switch, the mixing valve, the gas valve, or the condensate trap, are all the same, so you can't mix them up. When you put these clips back on, you should be able to spin them with your fingers. If you can't spin them, they're not seated right. Pop it back off and pop them back on, okay? Anytime you change these. All right, now look at your fan. Where it goes up into the bottom of the machine, on the bottom of the heat exchanger, you're going to see a Phillips head set screw on that fan. Top right hand side of the fan, you'll see a Phillips head set screw. Loosen that set screw about six turns, then you should be able to spin that fan to the left and drop it out of the machine. If you can't spin it, you're not loose enough yet. So loosen a little bit more if you can't drop it. As you can see as you're watching this, there isn't too many things in this planet easier to work on this machine as far as taking it apart. I can't guarantee you'll put it back together right, obviously, but you can take it apart pretty easy. Now the fan itself, this little yellow wire you see coming off the fan right here, that's our air hole sensor. That's how I tell you the temperature coming from the exhaust coming out to the air from the outside is how I tell you that. It's an ECM fan. That means it's variable speed, electronically controlled motor. Up inside here, there's a, there's a little impeller inside here with a magnet built into one of the impellers that crosses over the top of a hole sensor. That's how I know how many RPMs is coming through this machine. Now you're going to see they have a three-prong plug and a five-prong plug on this, on this fan. Any ECM fan in anybody's machine does the same exact thing we do. You bring 120 volts to it, then it converts it to DC voltage for your modulation rate. So if you have, want to know if your fan is good or bad, pop this off first, make sure you have 120 going to it. If you do, plug it back in, then unplug the five-prong. The fan should go to full RPMs as soon as you unplug it. If it doesn't, you have a bad fan. And that works for anybody's fan, in anybody's ECM fan. Unplug the five prong, it should go to full RPMs. If it doesn't, replace the fan. I've literally seen four fans actually fail in six years on this machine. It's been one of our more bulletproof products on this, on this machine itself, so they've been really, really good. Let's see, get right, there's two Phillips head screws. Pull the two Phillips. Once the sparker drops, just grab the black wire that comes off there and pull it off the burner. Let's go ahead and plug the wires off it. These two, get some plug goes to off. Perfect. Okay, everybody got that sparker off? Now, just so you know, if you have a machine that you just bought here from Bill or from Chris, okay, and it is giving you EO2 error codes, check for this shroud. We had a thousand machines come through the factory and for some reason the shroud wasn't installed on it. That shroud acts like an insulator, so it takes away stray voltage off the sparker. So on some of them that came through without that, we're getting EO2 error codes. Let us know if that happens to you. We'll send you, the, we'll send you a brand new sparker with the, with the shroud. We'll take care of it that way. Now, this machine, you should not be able to spin this wire, this rubber wire. If you look at it, you give it a little bit of a spin. Make sure you can't turn it. Any EO2 error code is typically spark related. You can also, with it hooked up inside the machine, you can unplug it, shut off your gas, fire off the machine, take your screwdriver and hold it out like this, and you can actually see the spark come off it. Should you hold on to it? Huh? The, the, the screwdriver? Yeah, you can hold a screwdriver. Hey, just do that. It's only 16,000. It'll be a was. Okay? Yeah. It's not going to be the board. It's going to be this little black actuator box. So we can get that sent to you as well. When, you, when they send you a new one, it comes just like this. The whole shroud and everything is on it when they send you a new one. Okay? So that's what that spark does. 16,000 volt direct spark off that machine itself. You have to take all these parts off. Said hold the <coughs> burner in place. Reach up in there, take the six nuts off, and here's my already. Look at it. There's already six sitting here. I don't know what the hell he did here. Oh, you gotta pull it out. You're good. That one's hurting, huh? See, I told you the new burners have a cover that goes over the stainless steel fitting, the stainless steel stuff. Then they have a drain in it that comes down. Okay? You can see this one's all broken. So, what would happen is, as the condensate runs down the inside, it drips onto here and gets it soaking wet. Once it saturates it and gets the porcelain wet, you lose your ground. So you start getting EO2 error codes. If you guys have any in the field that you pull a burner out of it, and it's the old style burner, and this insulation is soaking wet, let's say, and you're getting EO2 error codes, all right, and you don't have a new burner, it's not a problem. Pull out the sparker and the flame rod from the bottom, take a knife and just cut away the wet insulation. Dry off the porcelain, reinstall them, and you'll get them by until you get a new burner, okay? 
uh, you'll also be able to tell, because if you have an older machine, if you look at the bottom of the machine on the inside and there's any rust spots in the bottom of the machine, that's a good indication it's been condensing and it's leaking down through the gasket. Don't be alarmed. If you pull this out and a half a cup of water comes out, it doesn't mean you have a leak. It just means the condensate has built up and it had no, way, no place to go. You never have to adjust the spark gap on these. And these gaps change. I worked with a lot of wall hung boilers when I was still in the trade that to get you to change that gap, check the gap every year because it would change. These have not changed. So don't mess with the spark gap. The flame rod, as far as that, if you pull it out and you want to clean it, dollar bill, paper money. Works the best on any flame rod. Leaves no residue, doesn't groove the steel, and it cleans it in good shape. Okay? So if you guys are cleaning it, you're going to use a buck. If Chris is doing it, he'll use a hundred. But that's the way it is. Okay? Pair it. You should never see any rust piece, rust stains on here. If you see water rust stains on here, chances are you might have a leaking heat exchanger. These guys were just talking to me. They had one they put in four months ago, you said? And he went back, they're getting error codes. He pulled the burner out, and he had a bunch of big, white chunks of calcification inside there. Okay? Now, we've seen this before. Typically, when that happens, we have a leak inside that heat exchanger. You won't find a leak <coughs> by doing a leak test because it's a hairline crack in that heat exchanger, so it doesn't leak until it heats expands mm -hmm. on the inside, opens up the crack. The reason you have that white chunks of calcification is because it lets the water out of a very fine mist. So as that comes out in a very fine mist, it gets the heat from the byproducts of combustion of the gas, and it makes white calcification chunks inside the machine. Okay? the one you brought up? Huh? No, that's what I was thinking of for yeah, Holly. That was the worst install we ever saw, though. Is that right? <laughs> Look above the heat exchanger. There should be a clip. Yours is missing the clip here. So, um, Oh, this is an M. Don't take yours out, it's an M. Everybody else, so take your clip. Now, a little thing about these water valves, they're taking these apart. This is your water pressure switch. You're going to see at the top of that valve. All the new ones you get now are no longer white. They're black. And they have a stainless steel thread instead of a white thread. We made that change because last year, we had, out of 13,000 machines, we had 146 failures of that valve right there. What we found out, we couldn't track it serial number wise, it was all no rhyme or reason, but the manufacturer on some of them drilled the hole in the inside too big and thinned the side walls of the plastic. It gets really hot on top of there, it makes it weak, it fails, it blows pressure, street pressure right inside the whole box. If that happens, we replace the machine. If you guys have any out there in the field that have this pressure switch on it and you want to replace it with a black one, you let me know, I can send a bunch to Bill and we even have a program for that. If you want to be, retro, if you want to be proactive about it, there's a piece of paper you fill out We'll give you the valve, you fill out the paperwork, send it back to us, we'll send you 75 bucks to change that out. Okay? So we have a program for that. Now they don't all fail, they haven't all had problems, but some have. When we found out that was happening, give you an idea of the way Eternal works with this kind of stuff. When we found out it was happening last year, they had 6,200 boxes in stock in the in an inventory in Texas. They opened every box. If it had a white pressure switch, it got a black one put on it before it went into inventory to the wholesale houses, just to make sure. Okay? So if you have any problems with this coming on, ever exceeds 194 degrees, it trips it and gives you an error code. The black wire you see there, that's your NTC sensor for the heat exchanger. So when the front display says H, as far as temperature, that's how it's reading it, through that NTC sensor. Now that pressure switch I told you about, all that pressure switch does is when the unit is not running, if the PSI drops below 15 PSI, it locks at the machine so it doesn't get dry fired in case there's a leak somewhere in the system. That's all it does. Once it's running, it deactivates the switch. So it's not, in, it's not in the process after that point in time on, okay? Now, is, you, you have your flow switch at the top of yours too? It should have been to the left of that. So just look up in there, you should have a black flow yeah. switch. Right here, just push down that, there you go. Now you can see that one, the water quality wasn't so good in that house, was it? <laughs> Where that one came out of. You can see the buildup inside there. But it is directional, it has an arrow on it, so you can... I was gonna ask you that. You can give it a blow. <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> Nobody say I'm hired or I'll go get mad, okay? Um, so if it, if it plugs up, you can blow through it. If it doesn't spin freely, you know it's bad. I've had some guys who've taken this when it's been plugged up, take a little cup of water and some CLR and just soak in it for a little bit, and usually you can blow through it and get it cleared out so it'll work, all right? Just, just so the thing will, will rotate. Just so you, yeah, you can't take it apart. This was not, you can't disassemble this one. But, you, um, but this thing should spin. That in. thing should spin inside there. The impeller should spin. That's <coughs> not if it seizes up, should you I mean, and you clean it to free it? Is that a temporary fix? Yeah, you something? should still replace it. Yeah, just get them going so you have hot water, then put a new switch in it. You can see it. Okay. You can't. Get by there. To the left hand side of your machine, you have a mix. Common error codes we see with this machine are EO2, EO3, and E27. Well, this is different from one you hit. This is the shut off. Right. No, this is this is still a mixing valve. It's the same valve, but on this one, it modulates up and down to control water temperature. 
This one it's wired so it just goes to your phone. Opening phone. That's the only difference. I forgot how to do it. Now, EO2 we talked about. EO2 means you tried to light five times in a row and failed five times in a row. EO3 means the burner lit and went out ten times in a row. And E27 is this valve right here. Okay? With no control to the pump. This poor valve can't take it. This valve was made to take 50 degree water into it and make it to 120. It wasn't made to take 120 to it and try to make it 120. So this little actuator head just goes rah, 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 and doesn't stop and finally ruins the valve. Pull the white head off the valve you're holding. Two Phillips head screws, pop that right off. Pipe the, pop the white head right off. I'm going to show you a couple things you can do with this machine. Call Bill, get a new mixing valve before you go to the job site. Don't go there before. It, they can reset it. If you let it linger, the E27, you let it, once you hit the first one, if you let it go a month, they might get to the point where you can't reset the E27 anymore. That means the valve is seized up completely. You don't want to get to that point. Now, when you pull the head off there, this one's in good shape because if you look at the threads on that cog, there's no black grease there. If you pull yours off there, like that one right there. Okay, see the black grease on the head of that one compared to this one, which is all white? That means that valve's been compromised. There's a seal in there with an O-ring that uses the grease. When it, when it pops it, the seal breaks and the grease comes out. So eventually it seizes it up. Now let's say you got to a house, it was a Saturday. E27 would not reset. This is what you do. You can get them by for the weekend. Take the head off just like this, okay? When you look at that valve, there's a brass fitting on top. You can spin that valve and see the seat go up and down inside it. Take that valve and close it all the way. So turn the seat so it closes the valve and that brass fitting on top. Okay, you should be able to do it with your fingers. Usually, you turn with your fingers. What is he showing me? I didn't, I didn't pay attention. attention. Sure. Yeah, you didn't move. You want to move? Oh, you're turning back. Not too bad. Walk through, and if you called any of our techs in the inside line, they'd walk you through that as well. So it actually gets you by for the weekend until you can get a new valve to put on. Say how to do it again. Take the white head off just like you did. Okay. Take that brass fitting, turn it until the seat is closed completely so no water can go through it. You got it. Okay, then plug all the stuff back in here, but don't reinstall this back on top of that machine. Oh. Put that back in place without this installed on it. Turn the number five dip switch on, and they'll have on-demand hot water for the rest of the weekend. Okay. They'll have cold water sandwich effect and all that, but it'll take care of the problem. So that, that, that being the mixing valve, by yes. setting it off, that's your yeah. Once you go on-demand, the temperature coming out is based on modulation. Yeah. Now put it back together. Please. <laughs> <laughs>